Among the teeming masses, however, were visionaries of African descent who would remain undaunted, warriors who were to valiantly engage the enemy in the battlefield of ideas for justice, liberty, and human dignity. On the other side of the globe, Africa was reeling under the heels of colonialism. The singular beacon of hope emitting from Ethiopia, the last ancient and fiercely independent nation of Africa, pierced the blinding fog across the Atlantic to capture the undaunted spirit of the sons and daughters of Africa's diaspora. Thereafter, it was only natural that a bridge spanning the Atlantic began to form between the kindred spirits of the two peoples. Emperor Haile Selassie, having set a new course for the new century, was then reaching out for technical assistance from the industrialized world. To that end, he sent several delegations of learned high officials to the United States to recruit skilled professionals from the talent pool of the black diaspora. His efforts were not to be in vain. Though small in number, a complement of committed visionaries, led by Rabbi Ford, answered the call in 1931 and immigrated to their new home in Ethiopia. Can
The drums of war, however, did not frighten Mrs. Ford and her godmother, Alberta Thomas, into fleeing the country for their safety. At great peril to the family, they chose instead to stay and contribute to the resistance. They were both honoring the solemn oath given to Rabbi Ford on his deathbed. We came to Ethiopia to become Ethiopians, and we shall survive or perish as Ethiopians. By 1941, the occupation had failed. The fascists were expelled from Ethiopia. To my mind when I hear Rastafari Knowing his eyes are an eye Job be my guide I reside with the most In 1941, with renewed hope and a profound sense of mission, Mrs. Ford and Miss Thomas founded the very first co-educational boarding school in Ethiopia and named it Beta Urael, the House of Light. For the first time, girls and boys would study together. Even in a drought I no cry These are the times when I hail Rastafari Knowing that Jah will provide for I uh, uh, I said he give it and he take it away Understanding nothing is belonging to me Earth will provide you with the necessity We say simplicity is what we use in these days and Rastafari prophesied there would be wars Many possessions would be lost What you live is what you live with So hold it close, it's the only thing that's yours Cause every morning I rise Peace to my mind when I hail Rastafari Knowing his eyes are an eye Jah be my guide, I reside with the most high I no cry. These are the times when I hail Rastafari. So in that jar will provide for I. Uh, because we know Ja, we cannot walk away. Hearts of the lion is telling us not to stay far. 
Cause when it's all passes away To abide in your presence is the only thing I pray for Cause it is beautiful to know Storms all around and you safely guide the way home Yes, you lighten in my lungs Keep me right there on the straight road Every morning I rise Peace to my mind when I hail Rastafari Soon the school outgrew its small premises. Fortunately, hearing of the school's commendable work, Emperor Haile Selassie granted use of a larger facility elsewhere and asked that the name be changed to the Princess Zendework School in memory of his youngest daughter, who met with an untimely death. The school kept growing in leaps and bounds, and it was not long before it was moved to its present location with the buildings and grounds graciously donated to the cause by Her Imperial Majesty, Empress Menon. Dark brown shade of my skin, huh? Only head color to my tears, Flash against my olive bones That rocks my soul oh, oh. Looking back over my past dreams That I once knew Wondering why my dreams Never came true oh. Somebody tell me
In the ensuing years, the school became an unprecedented veritable beehive of educational activity. It quickly and efficiently expanded from kindergarten and elementary school status to include a first-rate secondary school division. Offering a wide range of academic subjects and extracurricular activities, the school grew in popularity and eventually captured the imagination and respect of a grateful nation. Graduates of the Princess Zendeborg School consistently registered at the top percentile of the national average in all academic subjects, extracurricular activities, and all varsity sports competition. Students of PZDES, as it was popularly called, became trendsetters and role models. Mrs. Ford never let up. She championed the fine arts and athletics, and for the first time in Ethiopian history, against strong cultural objections and formidable odds, introduced varsity sports, gymnastics, and acrobatics for girls. Thank you. 